Hey guys, Derek here. Welcome back to the channel. We are back to react to another episode of Bridgerton. This is season two, episode five. It is called An Unthinkable Fate. Now, what happened last time on Bridgerton? Uh, last time we had the big old like hunting party. The whole the whole group of people came to party at uh, their ancestral home, uh, and we had. Um, various things go down. We had Daphne catching Kate and Anthony uh, in the library together, almost about to smooch, uh, and she kind of low-key called him a hypocrite uh, for not marrying this chick immediately. But then he's like, I know what to do. And he made me so upset by his actions <laughs> right after that I, I it took a minute for me to, to calm down. So, not only does he not marry Kate immediately, he then proposes to his her sister, Edwina, and it's like, okay, bless that girl, you know, she deserves this, but still, like, she is not the right choice, which is frustrating. Uh, so, presumably, I don't know how quickly they'll try and, like, get married or whatever. I know in season one, they made the, like, engagement and marriage period like engagement period before they got married last like 35 minutes for like because they got some special exemption or something like that <laughs> um but now things are different so they it could take a while but hopefully things get derailed by the time that comes around uh but i guess we will find out so before we jump into this please consider leaving a like on the video it means a ton to me helps my channel out a lot uh, if you are new here or find yourself coming back often, hit subscribe and ring the bell so you're notified when I upload. And if you want to see the full uncut reaction to this episode, consider supporting me on Patreon. That is linked in the description below. Uh, the uncut, actual uncut reaction will be like a day late because I got to wait for my storage space to clear up on Vimeo because the Batman took up too much of it. Uh, <laughs> but it'll be there probably like Tuesday night around midnight roughly so um just keep an eye out for that but otherwise let's jump into episode five of season two of bridgerton deep breathing was this a flashback oh she daydreaming <laughs> She getting heated. Her bosom is getting sweaty. God, she's so pretty. Freaking A. Sean. Oh, oh. Almost, almost touch. You know they both want each other. Yeah, you should go take a nap somewhere. Now. You're just gonna get upset being in here. <laughs> Oh, she's you shaking. It, it is like a fairy tale come true. She cannot she believe it. True fact, she does deserve this. My apologies, <laughs> Your Majesty. She's shaking. She can't handle it. She can't handle it. Should have stayed out the kitchen. <laughs> can't handle the heat. Oh, first day of art school? Soon you shall be just as jaded as the rest of us. After all, one form is much like another. Oh, that's a naked person. Hello. Are you guys gonna fall in love? You're pretty. You're a pretty lady. Eloise, I shall need your help today. There is the, the dinner to plan with Lady mm. Danbury to welcome the Sharmas into the family. <laughs> and then the engagement She's like, hell no. Nah. How long have you cared about flower angels? I'm an open minded woman, I care about many things. <laughs> you do indeed. One of such things is not being involved in party planning. <laughs> this wedding is as much your triumph as mine. <laughs> no. <laughs> She's gonna be just pissed the whole time. I I cannot claim credit. And I shall bestow it all the same. <laughs> it's all your fault. Are my musings not offering you sufficient business? Indeed. But why should there be limits to a woman's ambitions? I would think you, of all people... Facts, bro. 
She's like, like I've been doing good, but I could do better. <laughs> Lord Bridgerton? Michonne. Lord Bridgerton, I was guest of meeting. I see that. Thank you. This is the jeweler. Hello. Is that cake? It my is my dude. Lemon. Pardon? I fancy a good lemon. What do I recognize this man from? He's been in stuff. Mike? Tea, three spoons of sugar, and perhaps some sandwiches too, thank you. <laughs> He's like, I would like a whole meal, please. And what of everything that passed between us at Aubrey Hall? Nothing will pass between us. Except your spit. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Need I remind you, sir, if anyone other than your sister discovered us in the library that night, then we too would be obliged to wear Nothing happened in that library. There were the two of us being obliged to marry the, the outcome you desired. Of course not. And that's as close as Yo. Uh, Anthony, you are lucky. Roll credits. Uh, you are lucky that Daphne is such a OG that she'll keep your secrets. We may use your finger to size... Lol. Oh, hi, 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 hi. <laughs> Put the ring on her finger, gang gang. Plot twist, the jeweler could hear everything they were saying, and he wants to stoke the fire. <laughs> He's like, let's get messy. <laughs> wow. This is a practice run for when you're actually married. Oh, look at you holding hands and stroking each other's fingers. Just a moment. Oh, and it can't get off. It appears to be stuck. Well, Edwina well, is here now. Yes. It went on pretty easy. Kate, are you? Yes, almost. You cut the finger off. Uh. Chop. Just, uh, Spit the... on it. <laughs> there. Miss Sharma and I would be glad of the fresh air. Oh, I should really stay with Mama. You will escort me. <laughs> She's like, you don't. I'm gonna I'm get messy as well. <laughs> uh, it is still, it's still headcanon to me that that jeweler is fully aware of everything that was going down and just wanted to stir the pot. <laughs> I have to wonder if you might not secretly rejoice with a Viscount to break the Ooh, she would. She would love it. You're in love. Don't try and BS her. She knows what's down in this town. Only a very great scandal would prevent this marriage from proceeding now. The kind of scandal that would send alarms through the entire town and be a stain from which the penniless Sharma family would never recover. Hey, don't tell her that. Don't tell her that. Jeopardize the shiz out of this marriage. <laughs> Miss Sharma. Is it worth it? Are you that? Is it worth it? Let me work it. Put my thing down, flip it, and reverse it. <laughs> yes, you are that fool. You're a fool for love. What a handsome couple they make. <laughs> no. Stupid. Don't say that. Dang, look at the fury on his eyes. Go tackle him. Go tackle that guy into the water. Drown him. <laughs> Look at me. I'm on a boat. Your sister seems happy. I'm on a boat and it's going fast and I got a nautical theme. Patch me the Afghan. Yeah, it's Ruby Mines in America. They are flourishing, I hear. Well, perhaps Can I should introduce myself. On After all, everyone like else Leo. is finding some purpose to their lives. If you are the child, then you so not me, yo. Get the f up. <laughs> this boat is real. <laughs> Where is your sister? Not seen her out today. She's uh, she mentioned learning about flowers. About arranging with you today, in fact. Oh no, she's probably going to meet that peasant boy. She gonna she gonna kiss that friggin' peasant boy on the mouth. Yeah. 
Me? I told you I don't know anything about your whistle and gossip. It's not how I see you today. Exchange of ideas. So you're an admirer of my work? Let's not go so far. It is She's an admirer of your face. <laughs> Yo. What's your name? JF. Eloise Bridgerton. Pleased to meet you, Miss Eloise. Dang, she told the truth. The out shop. You know. Have you a pencil? Don't mind. You may borrow mine. Yo, they're so cute. You guys should make out. <laughs> Did I call? her relationship with that peasant boy or did I call it? Looking this guy's always just looking Alice. dapper as hell. Not taking a stroll. This is work. You can, t you can tell this dude's just shredded, just busting out of these outfits. <laughs> you are supposed to be finding a way out of this mess, not drowning us even deeper in debt. Keep your voice down. Yeah, why are you going to buy fancy dresses you can't afford? Someone kill her. <laughs> Someone travel back in time and snipe her from a mile off. F trees that climb buoys, mother. <laughs> Michelle. The boat engine make noise, mother. <laughs> that sucks stuck in my head now. Oi. More ungloved hands. Into the water! Into the water! That's from the trailer. You get my dog. You apologize to that dog. God. Damn. Look at this. Look at this. That's what's up. Strip. Come now, it's not proper to stare. Oh, she is into it you're staring <laughs> do you see their facial expressions little edwina's like oh <laughs> yes get out of that water <laughs> that's so funny thank you for your expert services mr brooks i shall be in communication with you should i require anything further the cake then another time this dude loves cake <laughs> Everywhere he goes, he's like, you got, you got cake? <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, yo, art girl. Not only do you pose for paintings, but you draw them yourself. Goat status. Although two of the founding members are women, we are still not yet allowed to enter the classroom. Why? It's not while we're clothed. That doesn't make any sense. Go to take a turn. It is harder than that it seems looks. weird that like two women were founders, but they can't be part of class. What? That's stupid. That's stupid. You hey Benedict, you forgot the part where you are naked. <laughs> you have to be naked when you're in the middle. Okay, obvious sexual tension right off the bat. The naked boy. Strip. <laughs> what say you? What say you? He is more than willing. He's like, bless. That's not naked. Urrah dang, brother. But I had a choice to make. Between my family and my heart. And did you ever regret that choice? Hell no. Nah. From the very Every first moment, waking moment. Your father and I were drawn together. <laughs> very powerful thing. I have been watching you all week. I, I told myself I would support your choice, but I must admit I am finding it quite difficult to continue to stay silent. You've been anything. Silent. Yeah, true facts. You've been saying stuff all week. <laughs> you should be excited to wed Miss Edwina, but for all I have seen, you act as if you are approaching the gallows instead. Yeah, because he doesn't want to. He's doing it out of duty. A gentleman cannot take back his word. But a woman may. 
happens all the time in the Danny Ladies. If you have doubts, do not simply set them aside. This is the most important choice you will ever make. And it would break my heart to see you spend the rest of your life in regret. Yes. I Dude. dare say it would break your father's heart too. Dang, son. Invoking his dead dad's word. <laughs> That's a that's a bold move. <laughs> Essentially being like you would your father would not be proud of you. Ah, oh, Lord and Lady oh. Sheffield, it is being too long. Uh, may I present Miss Sharma and Miss Edwino Sharma? Oh my dear, look <laughs> at you. Isn't she? I know this guy. You are freaking what's his face from yes, Ted Lasso. I hate you. <laughs> Okay. I do enjoy the opera. This guy only plays garbage people, so <laughs> I already know this Sheffield man's gonna be a straight A douchebag. No no. We're Yo. all family. Oh yes, of course we are. Even after our daughter so callously rejected the match we had found for her. Oh, and oh, no less. With twelve thousand acres. Are you guys still bringing this up? And all for what? A mere club, Bruh. was he? Quit bringing this up, Sheffield. My mother has a name, Lady Sheffield. I really we must could ask not you. show our faces in society for years. Who gives a crap about you? I hardly think this is a proper dinner conversation. I quite agree. Please, go when you cast me out, what you did was set me free, free to raise my daughters far from your constant judgment and craven demands. That they should chase me. Right, I want nothing should... from you. Oh, you may not, but your daughter certainly does. Mm. The trust fund we have set up for her? Or maybe that's something she inherited from her father. That is enough. I can only think that you have been exiled from good society because of your deficient manners rather than for any other sin. Since the moment you arrived, you have failed to show Ooh. the proper respect for the Sharma family, and I will not stand for it. I, I will not stand for it. Lady Mary has done admirably. You may leave at once. You cannot be serious. Please be so kind as to send for Lord and Lady Sheffield's carriage. They can wait outside. Damn straight. This is beyond the pale. You're beyond the pale. And if you think you shall inherit a single sovereign now, you are sorely mistaken. No one wants your money. You suck. I forgot your character's name in Ted Lasso, but you're garbage people here too get the hell out of this house <laughs> that's what's up that's what's up so tell me what has she done she's, she's done, done nothing easier. you have made this match impossible but i am leaving for india and it is not far enough do you think that there is a corner of this earth that you could travel to far away enough to free me from this torment i am a child. My father raised me to act with honor, but that honor is hanging by a thread that grows more precarious with every moment I spend in your presence. You are the bane of my existence. And the object of all my desires. Oh, baby boy! Oh, hot damn! What? I'm gonna use that line on someone someday. You are the bane of my existence. What are you going to do? Mathematics? I did not ask for this. Yeah, but you friggin' want it so friggin' bad. Anthony, just kiss her on her friggin' mouth. If I'm with your sister, it will bind me and you together for eternity. And I will spend every day of my marriage wanting you. Dreading the day when my last thread of honor finally snaps. Is that the future that you want from us? For your sister? Yeah, that'd be a sad day for Edwina, for sure, but we're willing to accept it. <laughs> 
we are willing to accept the consequences for you to be together. It's very interesting that scene was like so, I don't wanna say fiery, but like passionate, but they were like whispering. Interesting contrast to how it usually is with screaming. I am not a little girl anymore, Kate. I mean, you kind of are. I'm a grown woman now, ready to be a wife. Barely, <laughs> barely. You are arguably still a child. <laughs> Compared to everyone else on this show, you're like 16. <sighs> you love him. Watching how nobly he defended us at dinner tonight, how could I not? Her exact thoughts. Bruh, tell this girl the truth. <laughs> she deserves to know. I mean, she's super oblivious to the whole thing, but she deserves to know. Peasant boy. Oh, peasant boy, where are you? Do not tell me you've traveled at this ungodly hour to offer more corrections of my writing. No, she wants to put her tongue down your throat. <laughs> Duty. More than laws or faith, I have often thought it the bond that holds our fragile society together. Penelope jealous? Or does she think she's going to get outed? Fidelity Dang, to one's family name, it demands then both got that booty. obedience and total sacrifice. God dang, girl. But what happens when such duty is in conflict with the heart's like true a green desire? Green screen horse riding. <laughs> <laughs> Why then, there is the potential. Unless you may. <laughs> is, that, is that the science? Sharma, I see you continue here with your morning ride. Oh, you're in the woods by yourself. Make out. <laughs> Sharma, you cannot break my sister's heart. She is all things good and true, a kind of soul you will never find. She has loved me as well as any sister could. You once saw her as your perfect match, you will find your way to believing it again. No. Please. Mm -mm. Hell no. Hell no. Because this feeling that plagues us so, it will pass. It will become terrible, nah. it will become bearable. No. And soon enough it will be as Absolutely if we never not. felt it at all. Just gonna get worse. It must because it has to. I shall see that the wedding shall take place as soon as possible. No, no. <sighs> this is stupid. I don't like this. <sighs> also, you shouldn't be alone in the woods. This is how you get murdered. <laughs> you should have brought someone with you. Edwina creeping in the woods. She heard everything. buttholes okay i don't have much to say because it's 1 a.m and i have to go to bed <laughs> uh but this is just just another just another upsetty spaghetti episode right like so they're whatever they're engaged and they're all planning the nuptials or whatever like getting ready to get married and it's just so clear throughout the entire episode that it is weighing on everyone involved that it is not the right thing you know, both Anthony and Kate are being talked to, like not just like side-eyed, but like like literally talked to by other people being like, listen, <laughs> this is clearly an, an untenable situation. Anthony's mom is straight up like, dude, end this now. <laughs> like, you don't love her. You love, you need to be with someone you love. And Lady Danbury's like, just saying whatever she's like you know get that cash money you can live a long happy life on your lonesome but get that cash money just make sure this happens and it's just like it's made even more complicated by the fact that uh the sheffields come and it's this big uh confrontation between the two families and it's just it's very eventful um a couple eventful things happen we have anthony falling in the water at the park while everyone else is on a boat. 
<laughs> I feel like people are gonna get so annoyed. Uh, that mid episode, I randomly was just like, I'm gonna just like sing a half a chorus plus a more of the I'm on a boat by Lonely Island featuring T Pain. <laughs> I'm on a boat, my boat. <laughs> uh, and it really had nothing to do with the episode. I was just like, notice these people on a boat, like, yeah. <laughs> um, but he falls in the water, and as he's getting out, everyone's looking at him like, mm, damn, son. <laughs> look at that white t-shirt <laughs> and it's just like so awkward um and <laughs> it's just like a it's been an unfortunate thing the whole time how much this is like weighing on the families i feel like the culmination of this episode though was the the little dinner party i just as, you know we already knew the sheffields were kind of like sucky people right because they were like they disowned their daughter for choosing a poor person um which you know makes sense for the time period but it's a shizzy thing to do um but as soon as we see what's his face from ted lasso you're like oh okay so yeah they're real garbage people <laughs> like they're not just they're not just slightly unpleasant like they suck buttholes <laughs> for a living like come on now and they just keep like that's like the only thing they want to talk about is how their daughter apparently spurned them and you know they were shunned from society they're just like uh they're just like penelope's mom where they just they only care about themselves and their own like image within the culture and the mom is straight up like dude like you guys shunned us that was your choice and she kind of calls them out for like not developing a relationship with her daughters and that's fair it's totally fair and then as it just like keeps getting further and further anthony's like dude f you guys get out of our house like not even his house <laughs> he's like leave leave this house that isn't mine and then uh him and kate have a unbelievably heated whispering match uh in the other room where he he drops the mother load of all lines <laughs> he is like you are the bane of my existence and the object of all my desires and it's like dude if you, if, if that ain't how you feel about your lady you need to get a new lady <laughs> like that just you know might be might be a little toxic well just a tiny bit just a tiny bit you know, you know, not necessarily the greatest thing that someone is the bane of all your existence, but also all your desires, but it does scream passion, right? Like, I don't know if you could describe a passionate romance with any other lines. <laughs> and th that was a solid line. The one, the line that I liked was that he was like, like, do you not think there is a corner of this earth that you could go to that is, like, too far from me? Like, that I will be shackled by this torment all my life because I want you. He's like, you can't, he's like, you can't be here. I can't get married to your sister because I will spend every waking moment thinking about you instead. And it's just like, bruh. Like, it is so blatantly obvious that you guys need to call off this engagement and just, like, have fiery, passionate lovemaking, like, in the middle of your yard. <laughs> like, you guys just need to, you guys need to go to Bone Town. <laughs> Sorry, I just, as soon as I said Bone Town, the image of uh, Captain Holt from Brooklyn Nine-Nine popped in my head. I'm just, Bone <laughs> <laughs> just classic uh what else did what else did we have going down in this town uh eloise eloise starting a friendship flirtatious friendship possible new romance with a little peasant boy uh that works at the print shop who is like a fan of women's rights bless up i called it as soon as i saw this dude <laughs> as soon as their their first initial conversation i was like oh hell yeah they getting together like little poor boy cares about women's rights like perfect match for Eloise um and she's she's going to meet him but it looks like Penelope's getting a little jealous 
she's getting a little jealous because they uh, used to go on walks every day because that's really all Penelope has is her friendship with Eloise and her little writing career. Um, and if she doesn't have Eloise, she's just a writer. But Eloise has low-key been throwing shade at her writing the whole time too, where she's like, yo, uh, she doesn't have any actual opinions, <laughs> which is interesting because it's like, she doesn't realize she's throwing shade at Penelope as well, but she, Eloise essentially is telling Penelope that like she doesn't have any actual opinions and like none of the things she says are like worth anything. She's just like spouting off gossip and stuff she's already heard from other people. And now that she is ditching her to go hang out with little peasant boys, um, it's probably not going to spell grand things for their friendship yeah, going forward, I'm guessing. So we'll see how that works out. Um, what else? We also had the Featheringtons being poor still. No one cares about them, right? Like, they suck. Who cares about their storyline? They're the Quanhav Bridgerton. <laughs> like, only people who watch uh, Halo uh, will understand that, where it's just like, this, their storyline's so dumb and no one cares about it. Um, but yeah, they're trying to get rich by selling jewelry or something and starting a Ponzi scheme. They're going to get all these rich people to invest in a mine that has no jewels in it. And it is what it is. I hope they all die poor and, and hungry. I mean, Jack, Jack, he seems like a decent fellow. You know, he's he was just trying to con some rich family into taking care of them all. He was chill. Um, and he, I like him because he was trying to con the crappy family. <laughs> like, if he, if he was trying to con a good family into supporting them, you know, maybe I would feel less about him. But he seems chill, and Miss Featherington is, scr is screwing everything up. Screw her. Um, I hope she dies in a gutter. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's so aggressive. <laughs> Um, yeah, man. <laughs> I love the fact that like consistently someone mentioned this in my comments a while back but consistently uh throughout the last how year and plus of making videos I've been like yo kindness <laughs> kindness is great but as soon as I see a character that I don't like I'm like murder them <laughs> I hope they love I hope they die destitute and poor. <laughs> I hope they're brutally murdered in a ditch. <laughs> it's just, my immediate reaction is extreme violence. <laughs> um, but no, Featherington suck. No one cares about them. Um, Benedict, good old Benny boy, is going to art school and within two days of art school is already smashing biddies. <laughs> he is going to pound town with a sweet, cute looking art girl who she wants to paint, but she can't because girls aren't invited to school for some reason, even though they helped start it. No one knows why. Um, but they're, I wonder if they're setting that up for like, isn't because he's, isn't he supposed to be like the lead of next season, Benedict? Isn't that supposed to be like his whole thing is next season is about him? Who knows? Um, but this art girl is cute. She's way cooler than the Modiste because she's like, well, actually, we don't know anything about her, so I can't really say that yet. Um, but she seems nice. And that's the extent of that, really. Um, but yeah, the conclusion of this episode so far, it seems to be that the marriage will be going on. Like, it's going to continue, even though nobody involved wants it to happen except for Edwina. <laughs> She's literally the only person involved that wants this to happen. And they're still going to do it because, um, you know, it would be the kind thing to do, the honorable thing to do, um, which they could avoid all of this. They could straight up avoid all this. If she could, I mean, she doesn't want to hurt her sister, but if she could convince her sister to end this, it would be so much better for everyone involved. <laughs> like, just... You know, Edwina was named the diamond of the season. Like, she will have prospects no matter what. If she ends it with Antony, like, it's going to hurt his reputation, sure. But he's rich as hell. No one can He doesn't care about his reputation. And then he's free to marry Kate and 
live happily ever after with someone he loves because he you know he doesn't care about the reputation again obviously so it, just edwina get your head out of the sand and end this engagement <laughs> but i don't know this not a whole lot happened this episode if we're being honest um you know there was more heated conversations but like in terms of events not a whole lot went down other than the the dinner conversation so um hopefully next episode more happens still enjoyed this one but i'm looking forward to more episodes those are just my opinions though uh let me know what you guys thought of this episode down in the comments below if you liked my reaction please leave a like on the video it means a ton to me uh, if you are new here or find yourself coming back often hit subscribe and ring the bell so you're notified when i upload and if you want to see the full uncut version of this reaction consider supporting me on patreon that is linked in the description below but otherwise thank you for watching and i'll catch you guys next time